What do you do when you're faced with an unhappy colleague, client, or employee? So many times the situation will go something like this. They say something that hits you the wrong way, you reply. And the next thing you know, feelings are hurt, communication is damaged, maybe even things are said that should not have been said. But what would have or could have happened if you decided instead to practice the art of de-escalation? Hi entrepreneurs, I'm Vicki Brown, and you're in the right place if you want to engage your team, boost your business, and grow your leadership muscle. Listen, you're an experienced CEO and business leader. You know how to de-escalate a situation. It's just sometimes we choose not to remember. I get it. It can be really tiring, feeling like you always have to be the person to take the high road, to always have to model the right behavior. But that's the job you took on when you stepped into the leader role. And the alternative isn't pretty or helpful. Letting the situation devolve into anger or stony silence doesn't help you or your company. I think we generally have a better handle on this when we're dealing with a client, but it's easier to lose our perspective when it's a colleague or an employee. So what are the steps you can call on when you find yourself in one of those challenging situations with a colleague or employee? Now I want to preface by saying this isn't the only way, and I'm not saying it's the best way, but it is the way that I've been able to successfully resolve conflict time and time again, so maybe it'll help you too. Also, I'm focused on colleagues and employees. Different techniques are needed if the person is a client. We'll get into that in a different episode. Now I know advice around this subject usually starts with focusing on things related to the other person. You know, the one who's angry or agitated or frustrated or maybe just plain loud. But I think that there's another really important step to take before you even think about the other person. The first thing you should do is check in with yourself. You know what they say, always put your mask on first. If you don't take a beat to listen to yourself and figure out what role you're choosing to play in this little drama, you'll never successfully diffuse it. So what are you wanting to get across? What need are you trying to communicate? Sure, a lot of the time when someone comes at you, your first reaction is to defend. But think a bit beyond that. What do you need right now? Are you feeling challenged because you need and don't feel you're getting respect or validation? Or maybe you just need the other person to listen to what you're trying to say. Either way, until you take a breath and figure out what you need in this situation, you can't de-escalate it. So do the temporary alternative, punt. Don't respond. Let the other person have their say because we already know that one of their needs is to be heard and then very calmly let them know you need to table the discussion for later when everyone is thinking more clearly. You have the absolute right and I would suggest the responsibility to take a time out to gather your thoughts. So call a rain delay, take a time out, take a breath. Now you may find that you don't need a time out. When someone approaches you right then and there you may be able to do a quick check in with yourself and balance. And if that's the case, then you're immediately ready for the next step. But if not, and you did call a halt, when you revisit the discussion, and yes, you absolutely should revisit the discussion, don't just leave it hanging there and hope it'll go away by itself because that never happens. When you revisit the discussion, make sure you're in a private setting. This isn't a play put on for the entertainment of others. It's a one-on-one -on -one conversation and both you and the other party deserve privacy. Open the discussion by letting them know you heard them and ask if they'd like to add anything to what they expressed earlier. If they do, listen quietly and acknowledge that you're listening. Don't just stare at them, counting the minutes until you can start talking again. Really listen and hear what they're saying. Hold eye contact. Nod your head in understanding. And before you go getting all spicy with me, I said understanding, not agreement. If it's a phone conversation, vocalize your understanding with phrases such as I see and I understand. Again, you aren't agreeing, you're voicing that you understand what they said. Once they've finished, 
you have to let them talk it out without interrupting because jumping in will only make the situation worse. So once they're done, I found that a really great way to immediately create partnership is to use story to alter their way of looking at the situation. So for instance, if Sally approached you in the way you approached me, what would you think? What questions would you ask Sally? Use this approach to help them begin to see the situation from the other side. And again, listen to their responses and use those responses as a springboard to discussion. Who knows, you may discover valuable information you hadn't even considered. Really, there are two goals here. One, to really understand what they're trying to communicate, because even if their initial approach was wildly off the mark, they were still trying to say something. And two, to clearly communicate your boundaries. And yes, you should communicate your boundaries. After all, if a colleague or employee approaches you in a way you consider unacceptable, you have to communicate that. Let them know your boundaries. Do it in a nice way, but do it. And remember, that goes both ways. You have to respect their boundaries as well. So, remember these steps when you find yourself in a difficult situation with colleagues or employees. First, check in with yourself. You may need a time out. When you have the follow-up discussion, make sure you're in a private setting and listen and acknowledge the other person. Use story to alter their way of seeing the situation and clearly communicate your boundaries. Oh, and one more thing. Don't be afraid to apologize. Not only does an apology go a long way, the lack of an apology, particularly when one is due, does severe damage to your leadership. If you find you're in the wrong or you took a wrong turn or said or did something that was hurtful, for goodness sake, apologize. It shows that you're self-aware, that you consider other people, and you aren't an arrogant you-know-what. If you found this information helpful, please subscribe and share. And if you're struggling with how to get your business off the ground and what comes next, check out the Leader's Journey Business Builder. I designed this completely free video series to help you with figuring out who your customer is and where to find her, how to sell without selling, how to package and deliver your service, and much, much more. So check it out by using the link leadersjourneyexperience.com. And remember, your inspired leadership is the secret sauce to having a high performance team and a wildly successful business you'll love. I'll see you next time on Leader's Journey.